Okay, two vids in one day, huh? It's gotta be a world record for the big dogs gotta eat channel. Earlier today, I uploaded um, a video on my top five websites for ordering men's clothing, retailer, online, whatever it may be. I'll link it in the description here. Go check that shit out. Um, as I mentioned, you know, I'm gonna be veering off to different kinds of content. <clears throat> so you can check out the website if you want, bdgeat.com. Go check it out. But it's December officially, which means it's the best time of the year. No, I'm not talking about winter, obviously, none of that bullshit. I'm talking about fantasy football playoffs. Week 13 is wrapped up, or Monday night is going to be wrapped up after tonight's game, which means week 14, if you're in Yahoo, which you should be playing in Yahoo, you have your last week of the regular season next week, meaning playoffs start week 15, week 16, and things get interesting. So I'm here to hit you with the injuries of this week and the top waiver wire ads for week 14. Let's get barking, big dogs. All right, let's kick it off with a couple running backs. We have Capri Bibbs out of Denver. Uh, suffered a high ankle sprain. Since the injury, they actually went out and signed Justin Forsett. Interesting enough, um, decent pickup, I think because Devonta Booker's just been playing like shit. So uh, we definitely could see Forsett play his way into an actual role there if Bibbs misses significant time, which he probably will with a high ankle sprain. Then we have Julio Jones. The Julio Jones was on and off the field, uh, and it's said to have been turf toe injury. Dan Quinn said it's nothing to really freak out about. You know, you just got to keep it monitored. The thing about that is he's going to miss a lot of practice time this week, and we know Julio's always on and off the field with different turf toe injuries, ankle injuries, knee. He has so many fucking issues with this dude that it's definitely something that you're going to need to keep an eye on here um, because it might linger, might translate into other injuries. So definitely keep an eye out for Julio Jones. Turf toe is something that definitely can hurt a player's efficiency. Next, we got Denard Robinson, who uh, actually filled in quite nicely for a banged up Chris Ivory. He got 18 touches as compared to Yeldon's 17, I think it was. Uh, unfortunately, he went down with a high ankle sprain injury as well, so there's a good chance he misses time. We need Chris Ivory to get back there because Yeldon sucks, and I mean, sort of the Jaguar, so it's kind of irrelevant, but Ivory will look to be the feature role there if back in time and healthy. Next up, we got Jeremy Macklin, who's been on the injury list for like fucking 18 weeks, it feels like now. He practiced last week uh, on a limited basis, and he's expected to return this week after being expected to return last week. Uh, either way, you know, it's, it's a boost to that KC offense. Um, he's going to be nothing more than like a wide receiver four. He's played like shit this year. Tyreek Hill has kind of taken over as the top playmaker in that offense over there in terms of the outside weapons. So Macklin should be back. Wouldn't suggest playing him. Josh Hill suffered a broken fibula. Not really a big fantasy impact here, for him at least, but he was actually starting to take over as a starter in the last couple weeks. Now that, that gives way to Kobe Fleener, and Kobe Fleener should see a huge increase in you know snaps, in targets, and all that kind of stuff because he'll be on the field as an every down player in the tight end position. So boost up for Fleener. Next, we got like three Eagles players to talk about. I don't want to talk about them, but we have to. Jordan Matthews and Ryan Matthews are both expected back at practice on Wednesday. They both should be ready for week 14's game against Washington. Now, Matthews, the wide receiver, Jordan Matthews, obviously you have to like more than Ryan Matthews because Sproles and uh, Smallwood are getting too much work in the backfield to consider Matthews anything more. I, you can't start him in your lineup unless you're in like an 18-man league and you're super, super, super duper desperate. Matthews I like uh, playing the slot position against the Redskins who are kind of weak there. Um, and then you have DGB, Doriel Green Beckham. He has an oblique contusion. So supposedly it's just a bruise and he should be good to go. But with Jordan Matthews back in the lineup, he's not going to get a ton of work like he's been seeing. Um, so not really startable there. We have Danny Amendola in New England who suffered a lot of high ankle sprains this week. I don't know what the deal was. Y'all need to take care of your ankles. Uh, Danny Amendola, high ankle sprain, which gives way to Malcolm Mitchell, as I'll talk about in a second. Uh, he's expected to miss the rest of the regular season, and they're going to try to get him ready for the playoffs. I like how the Patriots just get to do that. Like, every year, they're like, yeah, we could just get him ready for the playoffs because he'll be in the playoffs every year. Must be nice to be a Patriots fan. Uh, next up, we got Doug Martin. He bent his back late in the game, so he uh, ceded a lot of work to Jaquiz Rogers the last, like, three or four series. Um, it's not 
really said what the deal is yet with Martin. He is expected to play next week, but definitely uh, monitor that as the practice reps go by. He should, I'm, sh I'm sure they're going to sit him throughout the week during practice, um, but he should be all systems go for week 14. He said he's okay. Then we have Jameson Crowder had a hit pointer uh, injury. Interestingly enough, we don't really know when it happened because he was on the field for the last play of the game, the last offensive play for the Redskins. So it doesn't really seem to be that, um, you know, that, uh, can't think of the word, that scary, I guess you could say, if you're a fantasy owner. Um, he's been playing really well and he should be in a good position if he returns to, you know, wide receiver two, wide receiver three status, especially if Jordan Reed misses another game. Um, he should be the primary target over the middle there. Uh, the hit pointer, I mean, who knows? He could have been playing through adrenaline and it could be worse than we know. So definitely keep an eye out for that throughout the week. And we have Dwayne Washington who hurt his ankle. He was operating as the clear, like early down back over Theo Riddick, which is kind of obvious. We knew that shit was going to happen, but he's not been effective this year. He had like nine touches, 40 yards. That's like his average game kind of. He hasn't been finding the end zone, he hasn't been breaking big plays or anything, so this isn't, you're not starting him anyways. This just gives a boost to Theo Riddick, and Zach Zenner will probably be the early down back along with Riddick there, also not startable, so nothing significant there. And lastly, we have Muhammad Sanu, another Atlanta receiver. <sighs> they're dropping quick, man. This is killing me. Then Dirty Bird, they're like a lot. Everyone six weeks in, seven weeks in, we're like, oh, they're locked to win the NFC South. Now we're fucking behind the Buccaneers. Only the Falcons would lose on a two-point interception return for a touchdown on a two-point play. It was literally unbelievable. Um, so, anyways, Sanu, <clears throat> just started on, hurt his groin, he went down in the fourth quarter. He wasn't playing well. Uh, we haven't really had an update besides that he, that he could possibly practice on Thursday from Dan Quinn. Like, thank you, man. That's about as helpful as fucking titties on a nun. I don't know what kind of update that is, so we'll have to wait for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to see if he gets a practice in. Um, so it should be interesting to see how the Falcons' wideout position kind of plays around it with itself. Now let's move to the waiver wire. Two dudes that kind of seem like they find themselves on the waiver wire ad list of every list you fucking read every single week. And those would be Joe Flacco, Alex Smith. Now Joe Flacco had one of his career best games in week 13, passing for 380-something yards, four tutties. It's only the third time in his career he reached the end zone four times. It's 30 fantasy points. That's a big day for someone you could fill in. Now... All the weapons are back, healthy. Steve Smith and Mike Wallace, you know, the two running backs, obviously, Wes and Dixon both playing well. Now he gets a New England pass D. We could see this game being pretty high scoring, you know. They're seven and a half point underdogs, which means they'll probably be throwing the ball a ton. New England will probably get up if the script goes according to plan, which is Bill Belichick, it always goes according to plan. So it's Flacco, another decently strong play, 250, 300 yards, two touchdowns is my prediction. Like I said, Alex Smith. Should be getting Macklin back this week. Has a nice arsenal of weapons between Macklin, Tariq Hill, um, Travis Kelsey, you know, Spencer Ware. All the all the good backfield play. He's 27% owned. Should have said before, Flacco's 23% owned. Smith is in the same genre there. Guys, you don't want to start, but he's a decent fill-in if you're hurting at the position. Um, now they get an Oakland defense who's bottom five in passing yards. Over under 47 points in the game, and they are the favorite there. So they're actually projected to score 27 points in the game, which is... High scoring, you know, and I'm sure some of that will come through the air. So Alex Smith, a decent play against Oakland in week 14. Let's move to the backs. No one big here, no big injuries or anything like that. A lot of the guys that have been on the list for the last couple weeks go with Chris Ivory. As we mentioned before, Denard Robinson got hurt. He has a high ankle sprain, so there's a decent chance he misses time. Yeldon's not fully at 100%. He has been shitty, shitty, shitty this year. So there's a good chance Ivory will operate as the every down back there in Jacksonville when he gets back. He is 46% owned, so he's someone to definitely pick up if you're in need of a back. Then we move to Deion Lewis, another guy on the list from last week, 50, 58% owned in Yahoo Leagues. Um, you know, he's slowly going to be taking over that third down role. James White's still involved, but that role is going to grow. Now with Danny Amendola gone and Rob Gronkowski gone, two of the biggest targets over the middle, that leaves a lot of room for running backs to catch passes there. Even if White's still involved, Deion Lewis will continue to see his snaps increase and will take over a lot of the work that those guys, you know, Gronk and Amendola would have taken over had they not been there. So we got Ivory, Deion Lewis, third up, we have Kenneth Dixon, another guy on the list from last week. Now, uh, Baltimore absolutely spent the shit out of Miami. Both backs, Terrence West and Kenneth Dixon, got a ton of work. As per usual, they've been splitting 50-50, but Kenneth Dixon, again, 
Um, I mean, Wes found the end zone twice, but Kenneth Dixon looked like the more explosive player. He was averaging over nine yards per carry. And like I said before, they get New England, so this should be a high-scoring game. Um, Dixon gets a good amount of passing work, so that could be that could be pretty big for him. And going forward, you know, I mean, it looks like it's going to be 50-50 split here on out. But if, if Dixon ends up getting a chance, it could be a huge, huge upside there for him. Okay, wide receivers. This list gets a little, little longer. Number one waiver ad this week has to be your boy Malcolm Mitchell. After uh, an eight catch game this last week, he had 10 targets, 82 receiving yards. Now we have Danny Amendola out. We have Ron Gronkowski out, which means their base offense is moving to a three wide receiver set. So he's basically an every snap player. He's an every down player in that New England offense. Doesn't get much more valuable than that when you got Brady throwing you the ball. Now Malcolm Mitchell, um, he's averaged seven targets over his last three, above seven targets his last three games. Uh, he has three touchdowns over his last two games. And, you know, he played in 85% of the snaps in week 13. So there's no reason that kind of number, that baseline shouldn't stay there. So he should continue to see a ton of targets uh, in that offense, especially as a deep threat. Next up, we have Dontrell Inman out in San Diego. Now, he's been wildly inconsistent. He's only 20% owned in Yahoo leagues, and he is kind of the 1A to the 1B of Terrell Williams. Um, but San Diego's been an offense that loves to pass. Uh, they've been pretty successful at doing so. He now has a touchdown in his last two games. He's had at least, uh, let me see here, five targets in six consecutive games. He gets a delicioso matchup uh, against Carolina. Then he gets Oakland. And uh, in the championship week, he gets Cleveland, which could be huge. Now, the Chargers are top five passing team in yards per attempt. They're number six in passing yards per game. And they're sixth in touchdowns, 25 touchdowns on the year. Shouts out Falapa Rivers. And they're second in the NFL in passing yard plays of 20 or more. Or passing plays of 20 or more yards. You guys can figure out what I just said. They're second behind only Atlanta uh, with 13. So big plays are coming. Not always going to be the Inman, but he has a good chance of putting up numbers there as the second receiver. Next up, we have Taylor Gabriel. Now, he's someone on the list last week. Again, uh, another person that's you're not confident playing because the big plays are kind of here and there. But he's gotten five, I think it was, um, what do you have, five targets. Four straight games with at least five targets. Now, we have Julio banged up, Sanu banged up. And if either of those guys misses time, you know, he could have that Tyreek Hill kind of upside from Kansas City, now in Atlanta. And if either of those guys miss time, there's a good chance that they actually manufacture touches specifically for Taylor Gabriel, given his athleticism, his ability to run the ball, his ability to catch the ball. He's got four touchdowns over his last five games. He's averaging 50 total yards, 50 yards from scrimmage over that over that span. Um, so he's got a nice floor there. You know, you could do worse with the upside ability of getting a touchdown or, you know, one of those deep plays that he's been making left and right. 30, 38% owned, so he's still pretty widely available in most Yahoo leagues. Which brings us to Brandon LaFell, 17% owned. Do that touch on last week, and I said that he was more likely to find the end zone than Tyler Boyd, and he did so. He had a huge game, um, five of seven targets for 95 yards, and a tutty. He's the bigger target there out of the two, LaFell and Boyd. Now he gets to, to go against Cleveland, who, you know, are a bottom passing defense in just about every category you can imagine, and they've allowed the most passing touchdowns on the year with 28. So um, there's a decent chance that, you know, LaFell can find the end zone again. Doesn't look like Green, A.J. Green, is going to play. You know, he said, quote, unquote, well, not quote, unquote, because I don't even remember the fucking quote, but he mentioned that, you know, he will play again this season, even if it's in week 17, which kind of gives you the the idea that he's not close. If he's if he's saying, even if it's in week 17, there's no shot he's ready for this upcoming week, you know. So I like LaFell a lot. He's going to see, he's going to keep seeing these targets. He's, he's seen seven targets, nine targets, nine targets. So a lot of targets every game. So it's staying consistent there. So I like LaFell a lot. Which leads us to our last wide receiver pickup, Teddy, Teddy Ginn, 23% owned. A boomer bus player who's been much closer to a boom player the last few weeks. Um, there's three consecutive weeks of long touchdowns. Uh, scored a nice 55-yarder this last week, um, and then like an 80-yarder the week before. So, you know, this Carolina pass defense, this Carolina defense as a whole is way, way shittier than it was last year. It's actually one of the worst passing defenses in the league. So, you know, they are struggling to stay in games. They are letting up a ton of points. They've let up 75 points combined over the last two weeks, which is forcing them to, you know, really air it out on uh, on offense. And Cam's got that 
that gun, you know, he's got that fucking cannon that he loves airing out to Teddy Gain because Teddy Gain gets behind the defense. He's like, it's his job because <clears throat> it is his job. Cam plus Ted Ginn plus letting up 75 points a game on defense equals big fantasy points. Now, Ted Ginn, I think, let me check, he gets, you know, a decent matchup with San Diego. He's been pretty good on, on past day. Then he gets the Skins, and then he gets the Falcons in Week 16 Championship Week, which is a ridiculously good matchup for him, especially with Desmond Trufant out for the rest of the season. So I would almost put money that Teddy Ginn finds his way into the end zone in that Week 16 matchup. So pick him up now, and if you need someone to play as a boomer bust player, Teddy Ginn is your boy. Let's move it to the big men that also like to mix in catches, the tight ends. Uh, the number one tight end pickup this week is Ladarius Green, arguably one of the top pickups of the week. He had his coming out party this week against the Giants, and he only played in 48% of their snaps. This is the third consecutive week. I don't even know how to count. This is the third consecutive week that he's seen his snap count rise up, um, and it should continue to do so as long as he's no setbacks, as long as he's playing well, and he has certainly been. So 3% owning Yahoo leagues needs to be picked up. He's definitely a tight end one going forward, given the you know the lack of depth at the position this year in fantasy. There's a lot of a lot of potential there for Green, and that leads us to Vernon Davis of the Washington Redskins. Assuming Jordan Reed is out again, uh, Davis caught five or six targets for 47 yards against that Cardinals defense, and believe it or not. You know, this is exactly what I pinned on last week, saying that Vernon Davis is a good pickup. Oh my God, my hair looks ridiculous uh, around this thing. I don't care. Um, the Vernon Davis was a really good pickup. If Jordan Reed misses time, but a terrible play against the Cardinals. Believe it or not, those numbers, though, were actually pretty good for what the Cardinals have allowed against tight ends this year. So um, he should continue to see a lot of targets, especially with Jordan Reed out again, assuming he is out. And, uh, you know, the injury to Jameson Crowder, we don't know if he's going to miss time. And if he does, re, uh, Davis should be the main beneficiary of those over-the-middle kind of targets. Next week, he gets Philly. And then the following week, he gets a Luke Keekley less Panthers defense, assuming he's still out. I have no idea if he's still going to be out, but, you know, some good matchups to come. And I'm going to hit, hit you with the last one, which is defense. Last week, I picked one defense. That was the Baltimore defense. And I'll spot on with that. If any of y'all picked them up, started them, played them, you're happy about that shit. This week, I'm going to go towards the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, the Steelers, this has become a common theme for them over the last few years. You know, they're, they're an okay defense, and then towards the end of the year, they really start meshing. They start becoming a really good squad on defense. I don't know whether it's getting their personnel back or whether it's just, you know, chemistry or Mike Tomlin knows how to get their guys ready for December and January. Um, but this, it's happening again. Now, let me read uh, some statistics over the last three weeks from the Steelers' defense. Okay, so over the last three games, Steelers have averaged 14 fantasy points. They're averaging over four sacks per game, 10 points allowed to opposing offenses. 10 points. In real, in real football, 10 points. That is fucking hard to do. They have five total interceptions in that time frame in the three games, including a score. So now they got a beat-up Buffalo team with Tyrod Taylor leading the way, who has played kind of shitty the last couple weeks, and there's a lot of rumors saying that Buffalo might be looking to move on from Tyrod. So a lot of um, a lot of shit going on in that locker room, you know, could lead to tension, could lead to a lot of on-field issues. So I like Steelers. They're coming into their own. They get a Buffalo team that's not super hot right now. Um, so Pittsburgh, team of the week, they are... Yeah, I didn't write the percentage down. They're not very highly owned, I know that. Maybe like 30 or 40%. So go pick them up. That'll wrap up the video for this week, week 13 going into 14. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Go give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe, share, like, dislike. I don't really care. Email your friends about it. Beep your grandparents about it. All that good shit. Like I said, go watch the other videos that I put up. I did a review of the Microsoft Surface Pro Faux. I did uh, my top five men's fashion websites along with a little unboxing of some bomber jackets I picked up. And uh, I launched a new website, bdgeat.com, so that's pretty cool. It's still super beta version. I have not had time to really put a lot of content, <clears throat> a lot of continents, yeah, a lot of content on the websites. Um, but I think overall the, the look of the website looks pretty good, and it's going to get better as time goes on, obviously, as I get to work on it more. Um, so let me know what you think there. And as far as the what I mentioned last week, the, the online coaching, the nutrition coaching, that's that's going well. I've had a bunch of people sign up for that. The first five are underway, 
and um, there's people on the waiting list that will get in. If, if it's not too much work for me, I'll get you guys started within the next week or two. Hopefully that's the plan, um, but I gotta kinda get that schedule down packed to make sure I have time for everyone. I don't wanna half-ass any of this bullshit. So again, thank you all for joining me for this video. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, like my shit. If you like my shit, hit me up, email me, tweet at me, fucking give me a call. I don't give a shit. Do what you gotta do. Anyways, I look forward to next video.